Shine with Kendall Lanise. Real, real talk for real people. Let's shine together. Season nine of Shine with Kendall Lanise is sponsored by, excuse me, your unhealed is showing, healing purposely and aging fearlessly. This is the new book by Kendell Lanise. Make sure you go to Amazon.com and get two copies, one for you and one for a friend. Nothing better than giving the gift of healing to yourself and someone you love. While you're over at Amazon, don't forget to leave a review on this book. It's so important. All right, that's it. That's all. Welcome to Shine with Kendell Lanise. God bless y'all. Hey, everybody. It is me, Kendall Anise. How are you? How you doing? I hope you are well. Y'all, y'all, this is the last episode of season nine. And then we take our little hiatus, the month of June. I might come through, but you know, it's a holiday month. It is my birthday month. So I usually take off for the month of June. I'll come in and do maybe a mini episode, just a couple of things. But we're going to start season 10. Can you believe it? Season 10 of Shine with Kendall and East. It will start in July. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so excited that you're listening Please continue to listen. Go back. If you're just tuning in for the first time, this is nine seasons. So you can go back and listen to past episodes, past guests, past life coaching, past life coaching, and all kind of stuff, right? There's something for everybody on here. If you go back to season one, you can even see the evolution of the podcast because it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see how it started and how it's gone through, you know, different changes over the seasons. They say the average person who starts a podcast, they don't even do three, four episodes. They do about, I think they said three or four episodes and then they fall off. So I'm so darn proud of myself that I was able to continue this and I don't see stopping anytime soon. I don't see it at all. I do it for the love of it. I do it to help you all as a life coach and healing coach, aging coach. I do it to help you because the ultimate goal is to be better, right? To be well, to be the best versions of ourselves. And it takes learning, healing, growing, and really understand, uh, understanding yourself and how the mind works, doing the, the character work on yourselves. Because you can't continue to say, I want to be better or I'm going to do better. And then you don't do the work to try. Because what's the point of having the tools if you don't apply them to your life? It's just like if you have a toolbox and someone pulls out a hammer and you're looking at the hammer, but you don't know how to use the hammer you don't apply it and know how to use it, then it's just a hammer in a toolbox. You can have a toolbox that you don't pick up at all. It could be pretty. It could be nice. It could be sitting there. And if you don't have the tools to use it or the skill to use it, then what is the point? Get it? So you got to have your um, toolbox and you got to be able to know how to use the tools in it. Sometimes it takes practice. Sometimes it takes someone telling you how to use it or demonstrating it or using their own experiences with it. Yeah, when I had that hammer and I pulled it this way, it worked that way. It got the, the, the nail out of the wall this way. If you hold your arm this way and do it, and you're like, oh, okay. Give me the hammer. Let me see if I can do exactly what you said. That's the application. That's listening and that's learning and growing. Today, ending season nine in the healing series, you already know. You already know it's going to be a good one. And it's about healing yourself. Because sometimes 
you're your worst enemy. You may not even realize it. You may be blaming everybody. Hold your hand up right now. If hold your hand up, pointing it in front of you, what's pointing back to you? Your thumb. Sometimes all them little fingers, you pointing everybody, pointing to everybody else. You pointing to your childhood. You pointing to your your boss. You point pointing to your man, your woman, your spouse. You pointing to the children. You pointing to everybody else. And sometimes, not all the time, but a lot of times, it starts with you. So we're going to end where it starts. Uh, let's start with this week's life note. All right, it's time for this week's life note. All right, this week's life note. What is a life note? If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome to Shine with Candelanese. To all my writers, I hear you, I see you. Don't forget to leave your comments. Don't forget to rate the podcast. And don't forget to give me some feedback on what you want me to talk about in some episodes of this podcast. All right. This week's Life Note. Life Note is a saying or a quote that takes us through the episode, through next week, through next year, through the rest of your life. This one is by Tori Amos. Healing takes courage and we all have courage even when we have to dig a little to find it. Healing takes courage and we all have courage even if we have to dig a little to find it. All right. So sometimes... Folks are their worst enemy. You may not even know because your unhealed is showing. Excuse me, your unhealed is showing. You may not even know that you're your worst enemy. You may not even know anything else to do but to blame other people because you're not ready to face yourself to yourself. So I want you to take a moment if you're driving when you get back home, but if you're at home or you're at work or you have your cell phone, pull up the camera. I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to take a moment to really look in the mirror. Look at your face. Look at starting from your head. Look at your hair, your eyebrows, your eyelashes, your nose, your face, your lips, your eyes. I want you to just stare at your face for a moment. I'll wait. Y'all better be doing it. I can't see y'all, but I'm a mom and a teacher. So I see y'all even when you think I don't, but look in the mirror and take about 10 seconds to really look at yourself. I want you to look. Are you doing it? Because you are amazing. You are responsible for you. God is the ultimate and then there's you. This is your life. You can continue to keep blaming other people or you can stop and do the work. I guarantee you, once you start to do the work on yourself and you start this healing journey or you pick it up where you left off, I know some of you stopped your healing journey because it was too rough. It was too difficult. But where'd that get you? Probably circling back to start all over. And that's the beautiful thing. As long as you're still here, as long as you're still with us, you can continue and pick up this uh, healing journey every chance you get. So I was looking at lifehack.org, right? Article says eight reasons why you're your worst enemy. Let's see. One, you don't manage your expectations. It's good to expect a lot of yourself. Great to forecast good things coming your way. However, if you walk into every situation with an expectation to gain the most out of it, you're going to almost always come out feeling unfulfilled. If you set a ridiculous goal for yourself, say you're going to sign up for the gym membership and commit to a workout, right? Every second of that day, you'll either burn yourself out 
crash or let go of all the commitment experience, uh, ex- experience some measure of having failed. Um, yeah, I don't like that one. I don't like that one. We're going to start with two. You fail to appreciate the small things. This is my lane right here. Even though I get what this is saying, though, it's like if you don't manage your expectations, meaning that you'll expect, well, with God, I expect. So that's why I said I don't want to do that one because God can grant all of your expectations, but you have to expect from yourself too. All right. Number two, you fail to appreciate the small things. So sometimes you are your worst enemy because you sabotage yourself and you don't appreciate just the little things like close your eyes right now and hear the noises around you. Think about it. Appreciate things like you can actually hear. That might be a small thing to you because you're used to hearing. But what if you never were able to heal? So we don't have much time on this little, um, it says we don't have much time. One fun, one of the fundamental goals is in everyone's life. Where'd it go? All right. One of the fundamental goals in everyone's life is to have a pleasurable time. When you begin to appreciate every little thing before your eyes on a day to day basis, you'll undoubtedly feel enriched. The trick is to keep up with it as concerns or problems will always bog you down our minds uh, and distract your attention. You have to remember the little things in life. All right. So think about the little things in life, right? The things that you're, that you're appreciative for, whether you have a job, whether you have a house, let's start with the basics, whether you have a house, whether you have a car, whether you have a job, do you have limbs? Do you have, do you have a mouth to use? Does your mouth work? Can you speak? Can you hear? Can you wake up and uh, smell? Those are the things that people are not appreciative. And I'm, I'm a firm believer. If you count your blessings, right? And if you think about what you have and that's where your focus lies, you're not going to spend time thinking about what you don't have. And it's really just showing gratitude. Um, number three on this list is you take too much for granted. Similar to the point made above this quality, your inner enemy is by far the most pervasive. Every now and again, we'll donate to charity or count our blessings or witness someone close to us, uh, experience tragedy that will result in our own feeling of gratitude or not having to go through what they're going through. Why aren't we doing this every day? day. I love that. So every now and again, it says we'll donate to charity, count our blessings or witness someone close to us experience a tragedy. And then we'd be like, I'm glad it's not me. Cause you take things for granted. And this is saying the only time that you recognize your blessings is when someone else is struggling and you're glad you don't have that same struggle. I want to um, switch gears for a moment because I want to, I, I don't, I, I don't even want to go with that. I was going to do that. I want to switch gears for a minute, minute. And I want to talk about self-sabotage. That's what I really want to talk about right now. How many of you out there? sabotage yourselves when things are going great you want to be your worst enemy you're the Debbie Downer in your life you're the Dennis Downer in your life and a lot of people when it's time to heal there's a reason why you self-sabotage you don't feel worthy you don't feel good enough 
your self-esteem is challenged. Someone told you you weren't good enough and it starts there. And you have to begin to recognize the way that you think. Recognize your thinking patterns. And a lot of people don't because it's most of the time when it's time to heal, it's the, the same things that keep coming up over and over and over and over and over again. And you keep repeating the same thing over and over again. You meet a new friend, you meet a new new love interest, you have a new job and some of the same situations that happen and the same feelings that you have, they keep coming up. That's when you know it's you and you need to work on you. If more than three people say something, everybody ain't trying to to get on you. Sometimes you got to look and say, well, let me see what's true about that. If someone says that this is a character flaw that you have, you can't get defensive. You have to start asking to heal because even if it's somebody that you just don't even like, you don't even know if they say it and then somebody else said it and somebody else said it, it would behoove you to really pay attention. It would behoove you to listen and to understand. And most of the time people don't do that. People want to blame other people. Well, they did that because they don't like me or they did that, that, that. And they'll go on and on and on from there. But what you have to understand is it could be you. They could be right. So recognize the way that you think about things and um, your thoughts have power. Your words have power. Life and death uh, lays in, you know, in, in that tongue of yours and those thoughts that play through your head. What's in your mental playlist? What are the stories that you keep telling yourself about yourself? What are all of the weaknesses that you have and you don't acknowledge the strengths? What is that dialogue, that never ending playlist in your head where you self-sabotage? I'm not worthy of this. I'm not smart. I can't do that. I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. I'm too dark. I'm too light. I'm my hair is too this. I too I'm too that. What is the negative playlist that keeps playing in your head? That's the first thing that you have to look at in order to stop self-sabotaging. Because I know y'all are out there doing that, thinking that you're not worthy of greatness. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Come on now. You walking around here ordinary when you're extraordinary. Also, you want to be able to um, (laughs) get rid of trying to be perfect. Perfection is overrated. Who the heck wants to be perfect? And that's how you can self-sabotage because you're thinking that if you don't have all the T's crossed, all the I's dotted, then you're somewhat not worthy of whatever it is. And I'm looking at this article um, and it says ditch perfection. Perfectionism is often a manifestation of fear, fear of failing, disapproval or upsetting others because it creates stress perfectionism can actually work against you, preventing you from trying new ways of doing things or taking risks to initiate change. So stop trying to be perfect. Ain't no such thing. I ain't got time to try to be perfect. I don't even want to be perfect because perfection, doesn't that seem boring to you? It seems boring to me. All right. So uh, let's see what else this article says. Prioritize your own needs. Love that. So whether it's a request to volunteer at a fundraiser, it says, or uh, it's a Saturday afternoon quizzing a coworker before taking an exam. Most of us are pretty good at following through commitments to others. Y'all know if somebody calls you to do something, you're going to run and do it. If somebody says, hey, I need you for this. Could you please do it? You will run. But when do you run to the rescue of yourself? I'm going to go back to the article. Putting yourself first can feel selfish, but like a battery, you won't be much help to others if you are drained. Who child? 
prioritizing self-care can profoundly reverse the cycle of self-sabotaging beliefs and behavior. I agree. Slow down. Multitasking is a myth, this says. Busyness is overrated. (laughs) I love that because rest is essential. That's my two cents. All right. Rushing often leads to mistakes. Uh, Trying to get it all done. We often compromise quality, not just in our work, but also in our personal lives. If you are going out for a walk, enjoy the scenery. I say put your phone down, myself included. And just slow down. Say no sometimes, y'all. Say I can't. I'm not going to be able to. That ain't going to work for me. You know, silence yourself. Silence your mind. Silence your phone. Silence trying to be Superman and Superwoman, trying to be there for everybody, do everything. And you don't have enough space and time for yourself. That's a great way to sabotage. And sometimes people sabotage themselves in that way because they don't even want to face themselves. They don't, if they feel like, like Marianne uh, Williamson's um, poem, that you're afraid of failing. It's not that you think that you're not going to do it. You're afraid of inadequacy. You're thinking that, you know, that you can't do it. Like, who are you not to do it? Who are you not to be the best? Think about that. You self-sabotage already saying, oh, I can't do that. They as more people that are better than me. Oh, no, they're prettier than me. Oh, no, they're more handsome than me. Oh, no, they're taller than me. Uh, no, I can't. And you talk yourself out of the game before you even put on a dang uniform. You already, t- you know, saying you can't do it. And another way that you can self-sabotage is not being true, y'all, to who you are. Meaning that <laughs> when you think about social media, and I always use social media, when you think about people pretending to be so many different people, that's self-sabotage because what you're doing is thinking that you're not good enough. You're thinking that you're not okay enough to just be who you are, that you have to pretend to be someone else. And you don't. Whether you're at work and you pretend to be someone else, whether you're online pretending to be someone else, sometimes it's you. It's really about taking a moment to love every part of you. And a lot of people don't do that because they would rather pick themselves apart than to really honor who they are as a person. It's time to heal. It's time to make the decision and say, you know what? I'm going to stop being my worst enemy. I deserve healing. I deserve wholeness. I deserve to be the best version and show up in in every room, the best version of me. Show up for myself the best that I can. It's time to put 100% of you into you. It's time to pay attention to everything. It's time to pay attention to anything that has to do with you. It's interesting that people... um, can put everything they have into someone else, but they can't even put a percentage of that into themselves. Now we all have emotional wounds, spiritual wounds, some physical wounds and healing yourself and realizing that you're worth love and you're worth healing. It may not happen overnight you may have to start with little teeny baby steps it may be difficult sometimes it may be hard to digest it may be mm, 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 mm. it may be real hard to look at yourself and be like oh my unhealed is spilling all over the place I need to correct some things I need to do the self work. You got to be patient with yourself. You got to show grace to yourself just like you would to someone else. 
And you have to set boundaries for yourself. Because if you're trying to go through a healing journey and you're trying to get yourself together, some of the people that may trigger or take you back from your healing, you may have to set boundaries. And sometimes that'll be your whole own family, your closest friends around you, but you have to do it and you have to prioritize yourself. Um, and show yourself some compassion and show yourself some, some love. Because if you don't sell, show, show yourself love, you're not going to be able to get through the healing journey. You're not going to be able to continue it to do it because what you're going to do is go back into what you're used to and you're not because it's too difficult. And that's not going to help you. You're going to have to go through it. And it may not be easy, but it's going to be worth it. Um, on verywellmind.com, I love this um, website. It says how to find emotional healing. First, let me tell you what emotional healing is. We know what healing is, physical healing. We fall down, scrape our knee, and we see the wound going through different stages, y'all, right? You ever were, you were little and you fell down. It might be white because it went down to the white meat. Then it'll turn red. Then it, if you, and it has a scab and it's a hard scab. And as a kid, y'all know y'all picked them scabs. So then it started bleeding again. Then you had to um, bandage it up. Then some of the bandage pulled the skin off. Then you had to start again. And sometimes those wounds take forever to heal, especially where it is. If it's on an elbow or knee and you keep using the elbow or knee, it's going to take forever to heal. I remember I was playing um, kickball. And kicked the ball and it went all the way into a field. I went and tried to get that ball. I fell and cracked my knee open. And I had to get stitches a couple of times because it was my knee and it just kept opening back up. And it took forever to heal until they had to put a, a almost not a cast, like a splint, just to make sure I didn't move my knee so it could heal properly. They had to take certain protocols because it wasn't healing on its own. So they had to put something in place to help it heal properly. I still have the scar, but each year of my life, it kept getting fainter and fainter and fainter and fainter. And that's how it will be with your emotional healing. You might need some assistance along. Some of your emotional wounds may continue to open back up. Depending on who you're around, depending on what you're experiencing or remembering. But each time you do the work, it'll lessen and lessen and lessen. All right. So what is emotional healing? Emotional healing is a process of acknowledging, allowing and accepting, integrating and processing painful life experiences and strong emotions. It may involve empathy. Self-regulation, self-compassion, self-acceptance, mindfulness, and integration. Many people have the tendency to want to control the process of emotional healing by minimizing the pain and controlling their emotions. But this can actually inhibit the process of emotional healing. Emotional healing takes the time that it takes, period which may be longer or shorter than expected or planned. If you allow it to be fully acknowledged, that's the thing felt moved through and processed process. So emotional healing could be from anything. Think about anything that you've been through, whether it was um, a breakup that you couldn't get over it, over a job loss, tragic, tumultuous childhoods, trauma, um, emotional, physical, sexual, um, someone passing away that stuck with you, you know, illnesses, current, you know, uh, events, specific events, um, where you were sad, anxious, angry, whatever it is, 
that's emotional healing, something that gets you right in that heart, right in the gut, right in the soul, in the spirit. And many people walk around thinking, well, that was 20 years ago. I suppressed that. No, because all you need is someone to trigger that. And it comes right back up as if you were 10 years old, as if you were 20 years old, as you, as whatever age that it happened. And many of you, your um, emotional development is arrested. It stopped wherever you had that trauma. And it's time to set yourself free from those emotional wounds. It's time to start healing. You can't afford not to. Because I'm telling you, if it hasn't already hit you with a ton of, ton of bricks, if you don't heal and address your healing, your healing will address you and you're not going to know how to respond. You're going to have a meltdown and a breakdown and then you're going to have to get back up and start from square one. It don't matter. You can wait. You can take your time on the healing journey. You can you can take your time with addressing and confronting you. You can take your time. With you being possibly your worst enemy, take your time. It's going to come back around. I would rather you address it before it gets out of hand than when it gets out of hand and you're unable because you're emotionally spent. So let go of the emotional baggage and your um, attachment to your pain telling that story over and over again, unless it's helping somebody and you're using it as a tool, don't keep doing it because you're putting yourself right back to that space and it's arresting your healing. Um, Watch how you talk about your pain. It's important to, to talk about it like you've gone through it, not like you're still in it 10 years from, you know, that you're still in it and it was 10 years ago. Um, I really want you all to heal. Like that is my goal. I've had to do my work. I continue to do my work and I want you all to continue to do your work. It's so important that you do that because you want to be able to heal so you can feel and you can have the best life. Don't you want the best life you can have? I know I want it for you, but I can't want it more than you want it for yourself. So it's time to heal together. It's time to stop all of the negative self-talk, all of the doubt, all of the anger and madness and sadness and anxiety and beating yourself up and not addressing what real it is. Because if you're arguing with somebody about the shoes in the middle of the floor, nine times out of 10, it ain't about the shoes in the middle of the floor. You're mad at something else and it's displaced And you're self-sabotaging. You're your worst enemy. Don't you want to feel lighter? Don't you want to feel better? Don't you want to be happier? Don't you want to be more productive? It's time to start healing. You got to heal. It's important that you heal. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want you bleeding all over me. And everybody at your job, everybody in your family. It's time to start. Even when I, on my healing journey, I had to look at me like some things are not my fault, but how I respond is my fault. What I say is my fault. What I say to myself is my fault. You get what I'm saying? How I decide to respond is my fault, is my responsibility, is your responsibility. Nobody can make you do nothing. It's all up to you. Yes, I know that they hurt you. Yes, I know that they harm you. Yes, I know this didn't work out for you. Yes, I know that didn't work out for you. Yes, you have valid reasons to be angry. You have valid reasons to be unhealed. Maybe you just don't even know. But you know now. Study yourself. Look in the mirror. Look at your behavior. Why do you respond the way you respond here? Why do you act this way? Why do you feel this way? Why does this make you sad? Why does this make you mad? Why are you jealous of this person? Why are you envious of that person? Like what's going on with you? Why don't you celebrate you? Why don't you love you enough? Why can't you speak life into yourself? Why are you mad all the time? Think about that. I'm going to take a quick break and we're going to end this episode. 
This season of Shine with Kendall and Nisa is sponsored by my new book, Excuse Me, Your Unhealed is Showing, Healing Purposely and Aging Fearlessly. It's available on Amazon.com. Go cop that. Get one for you and a friend. Don't forget to leave a review. Now back to the show. This week's wow moment. Takeaways from today's show. All right. All right, what is your takeaway from today's show? Is it to heal? Is it to be better? Is it to grow? Is it to start working on you? My takeaway from today's show is it's not too late. You can start your healing journey right now. You can pick it back up from where you left it when it got too hard and got too rough. My takeaway moment is, it's time. You can't afford it to not be time. You got to heal from you. Healing from yourself. I don't want you to be your worst enemy. I want you to be your biggest advocate. It's time to heal from you. Ain't you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Ain't you sick of you sometime and be like, girl, boy, get it together. Come on now again. Aren't you tired of you? Come on now. You can tell me nobody's watching. Nobody's listening. That's and if you're not, then you don't know yourself. Then you're not taking the time to know yourself. And that's a whole nother show and getting to know yourself and being real because ain't no sense of lying to you. If you sit in the mirror, that's why I should do that exercise. Go back to the mirror. And look at yourself and tell yourself the truth. So you can start healing. Because you can't can't fix what you can't confront. Okay. That's this week's takeaway. All right, y'all. Season 9 is over. Woo, woo, woo. We are going into season 10 starting July 2023. Again, we may have some little mini episodes. I think I'll do a couple mini episodes in June. And then we're going to start season 10. I got a lot in store. I know what I want to do. Let me give you a hint. We're going to use words. And we're going to break down words. Like compassion. Like honesty. That's all the hint that I'm giving you. And we're going to have a whole show on some words perspective. Hmm. We're going to do that. I can't wait. But thank you for rocking with me nine seasons. It means the world to me. You know, my book, Excuse Me, Your Unhealed is Showing Healing Purposely. Aging Fearlessly is available on Amazon.com, Kendellanise.com, as well as Win W-I-N-N, publications.com. Please Email me at candelanise at gmail.com or if you can rate this podcast, let me know what you think. Leave a comment, what you want me to discuss. What's your word you want me to talk about in season 10? All right, y'all. Thank you so much for taking the time with me today. Make sure you share this episode out and tell people about Shine with Candelanise. Woo, woo. All right, y'all, remember you are a star. Don't allow anyone to dim your shine. Until next time, God bless. Peace. Thanks so much for listening. Make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at Kendall and East. And also go on over to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Again, thank you so much for your support. God bless y'all. Peace. Shine with Kendall Lanise. Real Real talk for real people. Let's shine together.